Scratch functions. Have you ever heard of them before? You may have seen the MyBlocks category in Scratch 3, but just how do you use it? Well, stick around because in this Scratch MyBlocks tutorial, we'll make a custom block or two to fade in and fade out a sprite. And we'll see what it means to run without screen refresh. Coming up. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer, bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If it sounds like something that you're into, then consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit the show more button below to check out the show notes for links that relate to this video. I've also got a link to my funky tea here. If you go suss that out and purchase it, you'll be supporting this channel. Big ups from me to you. But hey, let's go make some custom blocks. I'm in the Scratch Blocks Explain project. You won't need it for this tutorial, but I'll send you a card up in the top corner now to go check it out if you want to. Go across the categories and click the pink My Blocks. My Blocks in Scratch are like functions in other programming languages, and functions have a couple of main purposes. The first is to group a set of instructions, and another is to create a set of instructions that are reusable that you want to reuse throughout your project. We'll explore those types in action a little later on. But first, let's go ahead and create our first block. Hit this make a block button. Here you can give your block a name. It's good to start a block name with a verb, so like a doing action, something like do something. Hit OK. You'll see here that we've got this hat block here in our code editor. And over in our blocks, we've also got this stack block. It is the name of our function, do something. Let's go ahead and get our custom block to do something. So jump over to the looks and we are going to show. So what this will do is when we press do something, we will show our road. Now it's not very useful at the moment because there's already a block here to show the road. So just creating a custom block to do something that already exists doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I think what we should do is let's create an animation to fade in the road and fade out the road. Head on over to your control blocks, drag out a repeat 10 times block. We can get rid of that show block now. Head on over to your looks, and now we're going to change the ghosting effect. And we're going to change the ghosting effect by 10. And actually, this one is going to be negative 10. Okay, so this block now fades in, but it still says do something. So how about we right click it and we edit it, and now we just rename it to fade in. Now, if I drag out this block and I click it, it fades in, but you can't actually see it. So what we need to do now is create a fade out block. Let's make a block, let's call it fade out, and basically want to do the exact same thing. But instead of negative 10, we want to go up by 10. And now I can fade out. So this will fade out the road, and now we can fade in the road. So that's a nice little animation that we've created. And what the custom block has done is basically created a shortcut to these sets of instructions. I'm looking at this and we've got some duplication happening. And where we have duplication, that's a great indicator for us to use a custom block. So let's go ahead and create a new block. We're just gonna call it fade and press okay. So we've got a new block definition right there. And what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate this code and we're going to look at what's called parameters in other languages. What that means is we're going to pass some values to our fade block. And what we're going to pass are the number of repeats and the amount that we change the effect by. So let's press edit and let's go ahead and add some of these inputs. So we're gonna add two inputs. The first input is going to be the repeat times. And the second input that we're going to have is the change amount. Go ahead and click OK. So you'll see here that it's created two reporter blocks and we can drag those out and put them as values in the spaces provided. So repeat the number of times that it gets passed in and let's now change the change amount. So what we can do is get this fade stack block that we have now and where we see the number 10 for fade in I will write 10. Where we see negative 10 for the change amount we can go ahead and actually just do that. So our fade in calls the fade block. We can duplicate this and where we see 10 is the same, but we're no longer negative 10. We can actually just make that 10 and we can get rid of that code. So now we just have the repeat C block with the repeat times parameter and we have the change stack block with the change amount value there. I'll go ahead and press fade in and you'll see our road reappear and I'll press fade out once again. Now we can tweak these values so we can make the animation faster or slower. So let's repeat it 100 times and instead of changing it by 10, let's change it by one. So if I press fade out, 
Let's fade in first, huh? So if I press fade out, you'll see the row gradually disappear. So I'm gonna fade that back in, and then we'll fade out. Now I'm looking at these values, and if I were to look at this for the first time, this would be a little bit confusing to me. So what we'd wanna go ahead and do is in our fade definition is to create some labels here. So we can tell anyone else who looks at our code what these actually are. So let's edit it, and what we can do is we're going to know that we have these repeat times and the change amount, so fade number of times, and then we also want to add the label change amount, change amount. We also want to add the value change amount. Press OK, and look what has happened here. So in our two fade in and fade out blocks, you'll see fade number of times is 10, and the change amount, which here was negative 10. Fade number of times 100 and change the amount by one. So we've been good and we've been passing in numbers here, but you can also pass in some text. And if you were to pass into some text here, we're not currently handling for that situation. So that's just something to consider. If we right click and go into edit, you'll see that an input field can contain either a number or some text. You can also add in an input boolean. So in our example, you could just pass in a boolean to say, hey, are we fading in? You can go like fade in. And if that was equal to true, then we would have a fade in animation. And if it was equal to false, you could just say fade out. So you could handle all that logic in the fade. Let's go and have a look at what this run without screen refresh does. To do that, I'm gonna jump into another project. Here we are in this project, and what this project does is it just creates this nice checkered grid here. You'll see that I've used some custom blocks, or I've used one custom block to draw a pixel. I've got one single sprite here that is a square, and I've called this a pixel. So what this does is it draws pixels in rows across the screen, and it has a starting position, a starting X position, and a starting Y position. And I've also defined the pixel size. But we're here to talk about screen refresh. So if I right click this and I go edit, we're talking about this little label here. So what does this actually mean? There's a very tiny amount of delay that happens between two blocks executing. Scratch uses this to update the screen. So what you can do is if you tick this, it will no longer update the screen. So just to give you an idea of what this actually does, is I'm just going to press the stop sign here and watch what happens when I press the green flag. We've got our grid building in here and it takes a little bit of time. All right, so I'm just gonna press the stop sign. If I go back in and I right click, edit, and I run this without a screen refresh, watch what happens now. I press the green flag and our grid just appeared. So what it did, it removed all the delays and it just went boom, here is the grid. So if I were looked at my blocks as using repeatable code and passing in inputs as parameters, there is another way that you can use my blocks. It's gonna switch back into the other project. Here we are back in Scratch Blocks Explain. I'm just gonna jump into this cast sprite. Now, another way that we can use custom blocks is just to group and name a set of instructions. So you'll see here that we've got this long list of instructions and you could go through and figure out what it does. You could probably just press it, um, but it's really nice and useful to just be able to read something and just take it sort of for granted what it should do. So I know these sets of instructions actually tell these cars to go around the track. So I'm gonna create a block and I will say go around track. Notice how I'm still using a verb there, go around the track. Click OK. And what we can do is grab all of those instructions and put that right under our definition. And now we can repeat going around the track three times. So now if somebody looked at my project and they went through my code, they could just look at that and go repeat three times going around the track. I strongly encourage you to use my blocks as often as you can because it really helps make your code look really clearer and it'll help you in the future if you're looking at an old project and trying to remember what it does to help you remember what you did. It's time for a scratchy question and I wanna know have you got any experience using the my blocks category? Tell me about it in the comments section below. Hey, thanks for checking out this Scratch My Blocks tutorial. Like, subscribe, ring that bell if you're new around here and have a scout of some of the other content on your screen right now. You can support Surfing Scratcher by checking out my Patreon page and sussing out some of these funky tees in the description below. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.